Okay, so in this example, we're dealing with another quadratic word problem. So let's go ahead and read it, and then we'll go ahead and set it up. It says, a baseball hit by a batter can be modeled by, and then they give you the following function. And it says here, h of t. So h here represents the height, t represents the time, and I have it listed here. Height is going to be in feet, time is going to be in seconds. So in this case, height is a function of time. And it's asking, how long will the ball stay in the air for? So before we go ahead and start this problem, we want to go ahead and draw what our parabola is doing. Meaning, is it opening up or down? And if you recall, a quadratic in standard form can be written the following way. You have ax squared plus bx plus c. And if we want to know if it's opening up or down, we look at our coefficient a. If a is negative, it's opening down. If a is positive, it's opening up. So if I look at the function, I see here that a is negative, meaning our parabola is going to be opening down like this. Okay? Now if we go back to our function, again, height is a function of time, meaning that on our x-axis, time is going to be graphed. On our y-axis, height is going to be graphed. Now, they want to know how long will the ball stay in the air for, right? So they're looking for a time. So essentially, what we want to find here is we want to know where this is crossing the x-axis, right? So let's just say I were to draw in an x-axis here, right? We know that it's going to be crossing both here and here, however, it's going to be this one here, okay, that we want to find because that's where it's ending, right? It's starting here and then ending there. And in order to do that, we're going to have to factor. And we've talked about this in the past. So in order to do this problem, you're going to have to know how to factor. And in particular, you're going to have to know how to factor using the AC method, right? That's the way that we've learned. So please go back and watch those videos if you're unsure how to factor using the AC method. So I'm going to take my function and I'm going to go ahead and set it up so I can solve for the zeros. So I have negative 16t squared plus 44t plus 12. Again, I'm solving for the zero, so I want to set this equal to zero. Okay, so just remember, I'm just setting, in this case, h of t, replacing it with zero, because we know when it crosses the x-axis, y will always be zero. And remember, this is just like y, right? So that's why we set it equal to zero. And now, I actually want to simplify this down, right? I want to reduce these numbers so it's not as difficult to work with. So I can actually divide all my terms here by 4. Okay? And just understand, when you do this, you will change the shape of the function. Okay? However, your zeros, or where it's crossing the x-axis, will remain the same. So by dividing here, that's going to have no effect on our final answer. Okay, it will change the general shape of the function, but our zeros will stay the same. Okay, so again, we're just going to go ahead and divide. In doing that, we get the following. We get negative 4t squared plus 11t, and then plus 3. Again, 0 divided by 4, which is 0, right? So we're going to do this using the AC method meaning I multiply a times c, so in this case, negative 4 times 3. So I'll write it right here. a times c is going to be, well, that's going to be negative 12, right? And then we say to ourselves, what two numbers, when I multiply, will give me negative 12, but add up to 11? Okay, and that's going to be 12 and negative 1. When I multiply these two, I get negative 12. When I add them, I get 11. Now, again, going back to the AC method when factoring, notice that A is not equal to 1 here, meaning we have to factor by grouping. All right, so this is the problem where we have to take it a step further. So what I'm going to do is rewrite this as negative 4t squared, and then I'm just going to grab both of my values. It doesn't matter which one you grab first. Okay, you can write it in any order. I'll just grab 12, so I'm going to write plus 12t, and then the negative 1, which is just going to be negative 1t, or negative t. And then plus 3, equal to 0. So notice here that we essentially just rewrote this term right here, right, as 12t um, 
minus t. Okay, so at this point, we want to go ahead and factor by grouping. So, we're going to group together our first two terms, and then we're going to group together our last two terms. And what we want to do at this point is pull out a greatest common factor. All right, so looking at the first two terms that I have grouped together, I can pull out a negative 4. So that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull out a negative 4, and I can also pull out a t. I'm going to pull out a t. In parentheses, I'll have the following. I'll have t minus 3. Okay? Next, we go on to our next two terms. I can pull out a negative 1. So I pull out a negative 1. In parentheses, I'm going to have t minus 3. So again, we've gone over this in the past. I have a common factor, t minus 3. That's what we're looking for. So if you do not get a common factor here, meaning if these are not the same, Okay, you need to go back and rework because you made a mistake. All right? This is your confirmation to move on if you have a common factor. In this case, we do. So at this point, we're just going to go ahead and write our outside terms together. So for example, we're going to write it as negative 4t and then minus 1. And then write your common factor one time. t minus 3. Again, this is all going to be equal to 0. Okay, same thing here is equal to 0. So what we want to do now is, well, we just want to solve, right? So we take each one of our factors and we solve them by setting them both equal to 0. So let's start with this one. Doing this out, we're going to get the following. We get negative 4t minus 1 equal to 0. Okay, and then we're going to get negative 4t equal to 1. And then we get t is equal to negative a quarter, which is equal to negative 0.25. And again, we're talking about the time here. This is going to be seconds. So you need to ask yourself here, does this make sense? Remember what the question is asking. It says, how long will the ball stay in the air for? So here's one of our zeros. And you can see here that that does not make any sense, right? So you have to use some discretion here. This is not going to be our answer, right? So let's look at our other factor. We have t minus 3. Okay, we're going to set this equal to 0. When we solve this, we get t is equal to 3. And this will be seconds. Okay, this makes sense. Okay, this is going to be our answer. So the ball is going to stay in the air for three seconds. Okay? And that is it.